Welcome to GMBN Tech. We are at Sea Otter Classic 2023. It's day one, so let's go and see what tech we've got in store. have been making these beautiful CNC machined frames for 10 years now and for their 10th anniversary they've brought out a downhill bike for the first time this is the Onni named after a local rider near the factory in Finland Onni which actually means happy and lucky which is a great name for a downhill bike Onni will be racing the World Cups and the Enduros and don't be fooled this definitely is a downhill bike it's 200 mil front and rear um, but the drivetrain currently is 1 by 12 that is because founder Leo says that he's racing Trans Madeira on it it's set up in enduro mode but it is definitely a downhill bike and it looks absolutely stunning so the Oni will be available to the public around about mid May and you can spec it with your nine speed usual downhill uh, gearing or the 1 by 12 if you fancy it um, and it will be 29er or mixed wheels and of course as usual you have two halves of a frame CNC machine and then bonded together and that's what gives it this stunning jewel-like appearance what a beauty so Fox have just launched today the Fox Float and the Fox Float SL. So the Fox Float is marketed at trail. It will replace the DPS and it has similar damping characteristics to the Float X, but it loses that external body, which means it comes in a lighter weight package for trail riders. We're looking at 100 to 140 mil travel for here. And even lighter still is the Fox Float SL, which has a slightly simpler damping technology which gives it that lightweight body and that is offered at cross country to down country races with 80 to 100 miles of travel. This is the brand new SB135 from Yeti here, which is effectively the 27.5 inch wheeled SB140. It's 150 front and rear as standard, or you can get the LR build, which is the lunch ride build, which is 160 mil forks up front. Apparently that's how Yeti like to ride their bikes when they're on their lunch ride. Now what's really cool about this bike is the small and the extra small, which isn't here, I can't show you, but it's almost an entire different bike it still rides the same it's got a different swing arm and the linkage is slightly different with the shock mounting to the down tube instead of the top tube so that they can create a really compact bike that still has the characteristics of their bigger bikes which means that this bike can be ridden from 4 foot 11 upwards which is great for all those youth riders out there and people who are short like me but it is an absolutely stunning color in this sort of very metallic but obviously you can get it in stealthy black and yeti blue so i'm at the ext tent famous for coil obviously but they brought out an air shock now this is the aria like air uh, but what's really interesting about this is a dual positive chamber so you can see there's two valves on this shock which one of which you can load up and replace the need to open it up and put tokens in so it's going to be a really super adjustable way uh, of dealing with that on the fly and also I should imagine it's going to be super buttery just like their coil versions they say it will be available in all sizes uh, it is marketed at enduro potentially downhill but they will be bringing out a smaller version in the near future so this is the brand new updated propane tie e now propane said they actually loved the previous geometry so they haven't changed it much only the head angle is half a degree slacker but mainly the updates is having stainless steel sealed headset bearings and a new cable routing option of going through the head tube and they've partnered up with six pack and across to make this new sort of sealed front end so that it's super quiet and super sealed 
for durability going forward. And the cable routing is also tidied up around the linkage with this little clip and it comes through the chainstay at the rear and has a much tidier exit of the cable for the rear brake caliper. And they've also got a flip switch, which means that this can be run in 29 or 27.5 and 29 mixed wheel sizes. Also coming in aluminium as well. And this carbon with the metallic blue is looking really nice in the California sun today. So we're at the Vittoria tent and I'm here with Ken, who's got something really special. You're launching a brand new race edition of the Mazda. Can you tell me what the differences are? Sure, this is the new Enduro race version. So there's two big differences. The first is the construction. The second is the compound. So first, the compound is actually a super sticky 1C that is reinforced with graphene and silica. So it's really, really soft. It's made for race applications to increase grip and control. The casing itself is a multi-layer reinforced casing. So we first use a layer of 60 TPI and then reinforce it bead to bead with a super durable reinforcement layer. Now what that does is actually changes how the tire feels when it compresses. It's very muted, it's very quiet, it's a lot more durable, it's also a lot more controlled in terms of compression. So you'll see this package as well as on the tire itself you'll see a different hot patch noting Enduro Race. And also launching just today is a brand new liner for cross country and down country, but this looks slightly different to your usual one. Tell me about it, Ken. It is, there's a lot of riders who want the performance of a liner system, but they just want a little less weight. And that's where this new airliner light comes into play. So it uses a proprietary foam and cross section shape to provide a lot more sidewall support on these really lightweight cross country tires, right? Cross country tires are lightweight, so you need a little bit more support. This is really cool actually. There's no air in this system, but you can see how much lateral support this system has as a result of that. Now that gives you a much more progressive feel as the tire compresses, as well as protection from rim dings and you know, tire protection flats, things such as this. So another strength of the airliner light is actually the burp protection. So if you notice on the bottom, there's this square channel that locks right into your rim, pushes those tire beads against the rim walls. Make sure that your tire doesn't burp when you're running low pressure. The other thing is in the event of a catastrophic failure, say you, you, you know, your spokes poke through your rim tape or something like that, you have air loss somehow, you can run this as a run flat to get you back to the, the car, the trailhead, or across the finish line if you're doing a race. So this is the brand new Specialized Epic uh, World Cup which as you can see is distinctive by the layout of the suspension at the back here. Uh, what you might be surprised to find is this is 75 mils of travel, which maybe goes against the grain of most World Cups are going up in travel, but Specialized wanted to combine their existing full suspension Epic with their Epic hardtail and create something that is as stiff as their hardtail, but still has that give if they hit anything big and need to go into their travel. They're pairing it with a 110 fork at the front as standard. What we see here is the S-Works edition, which has this gorgeous uh, green fade over the raw carbon. You can have it in a red fade as well. And it's also being paired with the brand new one-piece stem cockpit, uh, the Roval SL there as well. And it looks absolutely stunning. So this is the brand new Nuke Proof Descent, the 200 mil front and rear downhill bike. First time doing it in carbon for Nuke Proof here. And what's great about this bike is the headset cup so you can adjust the head angle and the reach. And you've also got this little piece down here where you can get three different lengths on your chain stays, which literally just unbolts and pops back in to change it on the fly. You've also got a little flip chip in here, which means that you can run either 29er or 27.5. Super adjustable, gorgeous looking bike. I think I need one. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a special custom nuke proof reactor as a, an ode to Mario Andretti, who is a former Formula One world champion, also won the Daytona 500. He's won the Le Mans as well, but also he was the lap record holder here at Laguna Seca. And so that's why this has been done. Um, they need to be careful I don't walk home with this one, it's gorgeous. 
So I'm here in the intense tent and we couldn't walk past without checking out this Gen 1 HP uh, 6 here, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm here with John Hall, Aaron Gwynn's mechanic, and you've had a hand in making this bike, well, more workable, maybe. <laughs> Tell me, what, what was your input on this? Yeah, so, I mean, this one you'll see we have some machine cutouts here. <clears throat> this was strictly a weight reduction experiment. Um, we knew that this isn't a viable, producible um, thing that we could do, but we had an extra backbone, and we said, how can we make the actual one we're going to be racing lighter? And so we did that, learned from it. And so I really love all the, all the machine work and stuff done on that. The other thing that I really enjoy working on this bike, and I worked closely with the engineers, and I was fortunate enough where they could ask me, you know, what do you want out of a bike um, as a mechanic? And I got to have that input. And I, the worst thing I think all mechanics will hate is the amount of washers that will fall out of links <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So what we've done is basically eliminate every single washer out of all the, out of all the links. The only ones we have are at these two pivots here. There's a washer in each one. And on this seat stay right here behind, you'd have to take a kind of a close up look on the frame there. There's a small channel right there that actually captures the washer. So you could slide it in after assembly, let go and it's not gonna fall out or anything like that. So I like the really intricate details like that, that um, you know make a bike enjoyable to work on. I really just ask for and request stuff to make things easier to get to. Um, you know, things like all the Allen head brooches on the hardware are all the same size, so you don't have to constantly be switching wrenches as you're going through and doing bolt checks. Um, just little stuff like that that kind of flies under the radar. Like, that's the stuff I really enjoy. So I'm at the Cane Creek 10 and they're displaying their limited run of the Work Series Helm, which we mentioned on the GMB and Tech show recently, but seeing it in the flesh is absolutely stunning. You can see these green seals here, that's the SKF uh, wiper seals in there as standard. Now it is kind of a helm, it's the main body is the helm, so it is quite uh, stiff, it should be tracking rough ground well, but they've shaved a bit of weight on the crown to take off about 100 grams, so it is a sub two kilo fork, definitely in the down country territory, and it's 130 mils of travel, but with a few tools in your own home workshop, you can adjust it down by 10 mils, so you can go down to 120, 180 if you want to um, and this is a very limited run I should say only a hundred globally so if you're interested get in there quick Wow, there is more tech here than I can fit into one day. But uh, let me know down in the comments below what's been your favorite so far. And if I'm missing anything that I need to see on day two, let me know. I'm going to see that. And stay tuned tomorrow for another installment.